Hello and welcome to my channel where we talk about tips and tricks for teaching elementary music. All right, here's today's video. So for today's video, we're going to talk about two topics. We're going to talk about how to teach form and we're going to talk about guided listening. So let's look at form first. Let me get some visuals to help us out. In my classroom, this is how I teach form. So I tell the students that introduction is like get ready music and that not every song has it, but a lot of songs do. And that when they hear that, I like them to do this, where they'll put their hands in the air like this, and then they can move how the music makes them feel. So maybe, maybe the music's fast, maybe it makes them feel like doing this, maybe it's a slow music, makes them feel like waving their arms, but their arms are up here because the introduction, if we have it, happens at the beginning. And that is actually the very first form that I teach any of my students is introduction. Kindergarten will learn introduction pretty much that second or third music class. And I won't teach them anything else until we get to about late October or so. So the second thing that I teach in form, if I'm starting out beginning with kindergarten, is CODA. So for CODA, I have the students say, um, the coda, it's like wave goodbye music, because if we have the coda, it's at the end, so I have them just wave goodbye to the music. And that comes about in October for kindergarten. Um, when you get further along, round about November, December, that's when I'll introduce interlude. So for the interlude, I tell my students that it's take a break music. Usually happens if we have one in the middle of the song, we might have more than one in a song, and we cross our arms like this, like we're just taking a break. And we kind of move to the beat of the music like this. The reason I don't introduce all three of these at the same time is because interlude and introduction, very similar words, similar in length. They both have that INT start. This is kindergarten. They're not reading um, words that have this many syllables in, in it in general. So that is why I do not um, teach these together, okay? Coda is absolutely easier, but introduction, start at the beginning, then I do the end, and then I add that little interlude in the middle. When the students are in first grade, if they had me in kindergarten, they already know all three of those words, and it's just a matter of reviewing. Same with second and up. So from first grade on up, I will introduce these words as if they don't know them, but I might also ask, does anybody remember what this is? To see if anybody does remember. So let's talk about um, these, the letter patterns. So I learned a long time ago to use food as my reference point for letter patterns. I have discovered in my almost 30 years of teaching that students really struggle with understanding the concept of form. They can see it, you can show it to them, they can do motions with you, they can follow along with you while you're doing it, but when it comes to them figuring it out for themselves, it seems to be quite difficult because they don't always hear the changes in the music. And we're gonna talk more about that listening portion a little bit later on in the video. But right now, let's talk about just some little creative ways to help the students remember different types of form. I came up with this a few years ago I was teaching a class and I was like, this song has an A section and a B section, okay? And I was like, how can I get them to remember that there's two things that are in the same section, but they're different, okay? So I thought of a taco. <laughs> and I said, we're gonna pretend that if you had a taco, you would have to have two things in order to make it a taco. You would have to have at least a shell, it could be soft or hard, and you would have to have at least one thing that you're putting in the taco, whether it's 
meat of some kind, whether it's just cheese, whatever. You have to put something in the taco. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of tortilla chips, right? So the kids really latched onto that. And then I brought these in here, the introduction, interlude, and coda. And I said, so every song has a letter pattern, even if it's just A. And I do the example of Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb, his fleece is white as snow. Just an A song, right? Um, but I said, not every song has these. These are the extra stuff. So going back to our taco idea, so you've got your shell and something that goes in. We're gonna, I'm gonna put beef in mine and I'm gonna add cheese, tomatoes, and sour cream. So those are the extra things. And I talk about the fact, does everybody eat their taco with cheese, tomatoes, and sour cream in them? And all the students agree, not everybody eats it that way. So these are the extra things. So not every song has them, but a lot of them do. So that would be how I would teach AB form. So then let me just show you how I would teach ABA and then how I would teach um, ABC. So ABA, now we're talking about a sandwich or a hamburger, just, or, um, like an Oreo cookie, anything that you can think of that has the same bottom and the same top and then something different in the middle, right? I usually say hamburger, it's just easier um, for me to remember. And I do the same thing, like if it's a hamburger, I'll talk about, you know, am I gonna have lettuce, ketchup and pickles and put it on my hamburger or maybe I just want the lettuce or just the pickles, right? Okay, so that's how you would do ABA, <laughs> if I can get it to go right. There we go. All right, and then ABC, and I think this is my student's favorite one, just because I think they like this better than all the other ones, is nachos, right? And that leans very easily with this because it does look like a tortilla chip, you know? So you've got, you know, you've gotta have your chips, you're gonna have cheese, and then you're probably gonna put one other thing on that nachos, whether it's, um, even if it's just salsa or if it's beef or whatever you're gonna put on there. And then you've got your extra things again. And yes, it does make us quite hungry when we talk about forms. So I try not to talk about it too often, but it does stick in their brain. And a lot of time later on when I'm doing a song, let's say an AB song, somebody will say to me, oh, that's a taco. So it's like it got in there, okay? So they get it when they see it visually, but they don't always get it when they hear it. So we're gonna talk more about that when we get into the guided listening portion. Okay, so I'm getting ready to play a song for you and I'm not gonna let you see it at all. We're just gonna to listen to it. And I want you to um, just listen to it and see if you can pick out where the introduction is, where the interlude is, where the coda is, where the A section is, where the B section is. I will tell you the form is A, B, A. All right, here we go. Okay, so in that particular song, you guys that are watching me, most of you are probably music educators or, or wanting to be music educators. So I hope you heard where the introduction and the interludes were in the A section and the B section and, and then the A section again and the coda. Um, but for students, it's complicated. They can't always hear that, okay? So that's why you have to guide them. And this is where we're gonna go into guided listening 
So we're going to talk about guided listening more fully now, but I'm also talking about form at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it again, but this time I'm going to add a voice part to it. Now, let me put a disclaimer up here. I am a singer. That is my instrument, but it is summertime and I am older and the older you get, the harder it is to bounce back from not singing multiple times a day. And I'm a little out of shape, so it's not going to be the best vocal recording that I've ever made, but I hope that it will give you an idea of what I'm getting ready to explain here. I have found with my students, if we were talking about trying to figure out form where they can really hear where the music shifts to that different section or that different part, that songs with voices in it helps them out immensely, especially if the A section is one type of singing, like a scat singing, and then the B section is words. Or say the A section is the same words every time and the B section is a verse. So a verse and chorus situation or chorus and verse, whichever way it is. And that seems to help them out a lot. Whereas if they were to listen to that piece of music that I just played for you, they would probably be scratching their head. They might find the introduction they might find the coda, but I don't think they'd be able to tell you where anything else was, okay? So we're, we're, I'm gonna play the same song again, but this time I'm gonna add my voiceover work, which I apologize ahead of time, it's not gonna be the greatest, but I just wanna give you a taste of what that would be like. And I want you to think as, if, as you're listening to it, I want you to imagine that you're a younger student and see if you think this would help you to differentiate between the sections better. All right, here we go. Okay, if you notice there, I put up a whole bunch of pictures of the intro, interlude, coda, and the A and the B, because that's what I would be doing in the classroom while we'd be listening to that song, is I would be holding up those different parts. Maybe it's a song we're getting ready to sing, and I just want them to listen to it a little bit at the beginning so they can hear how it goes, okay? Or maybe we're actually singing it already, and I'm just holding up the different a, B, etc. to the song so that it helps to develop their ear to know when that changes because it's very hard for them to hear and feel that change in the music. Let's shift over into guided listening. So I don't know if you noticed that song when I played it. There was a piano part, there was a flute part, there was a bass part, a contrabass part that I wrote, and then there was a um, xylophone part and a frame drum part. This was done in uh, notation software, which is not designed to be recording studio quality. So they were all at different dynamic levels. The flute was overpowering. I could hardly hear the cello, the xylophone kind of disappeared. So I don't know that if a student was listening to that, that they would necessarily pick out all the instruments that they heard. So when it comes to listening, I include that with my steady beat song. And my steady beat song is the song that my students come into the classroom with. 
So once the students find that steady beat, they go ahead and they do the pattern with me, whatever pattern I'm giving them to match the meter. And then I have them sit down and I take it and I stop the music and I take attendance really quickly. At that point, I say, we're going to listen to some of that steady beat music again. And I want you to listen for the following. So whatever I want them to listen for that day. So it might be instrumentation. It might be um, what change. Maybe there's some tempo changes or some, some dynamic changes. It could be um, genre. Is it jazz? Is it rock and roll? Is it classical? Is it country? It could be what part of the world is it from? So all of these things play into what we're listening for. So I will make it very clear to the students, okay, we're going to listen to the music again, and this is what I want you to pay attention for. So if I was playing something like, um, I don't know, Handel's Firework, where there's a lot of great trumpet parts throughout that, I might say, can you pick out that instrument that's playing the really high part um, in this specific spot. And so I might play the music and then like point and be like that instrument right there and then move my finger away. And I might even, you know, kind of imitate it with my voice so they know exactly what instrument they're listening for. And then the students could raise their hand and say, um, that's a trumpet or I think it's a flute or whatever they think it is. Okay. You're guiding them in the direction of this is what I want you to listen for. When it comes to kindergarten, most of the time, I will just tell them those first few weeks of school, can you just pretend to play an instrument that you hear? So I put the music on and I'm looking around the room and I'm seeing, are they picking out any instruments? So if I see some kids doing the piano and there's no piano, then I know that they're not hearing everything that's in there or they're getting confused with what's in there. But if I see a, a student that is doing a trumpet, and there is a trumpet, then I know that, oh, they heard that. So then I might say while we're listening to it, maybe after a few measures, switch to a different instrument that you hear. So they're in the air, they're air playing their piano or their guitar or whatever it is that they hear in the song. And it gives me just a quick idea of, are they hearing the correct instruments in the song? Okay, so here's a song that I could use as a steady beat song that my students actually composed in one of my classes last year. And it's not a lot of instrumentation to it. You'll be able to pick it out pretty easily. But this would be something that would be quite easy for the students to listen to and say, I think I heard this instrument or that instrument. So just listen. So the instruments were piano, maracas, tambourine, claves, and a frame drum. So to wrap this video up, when it comes to form, it is really helpful if you will do visuals or motions that will help your students to know the form of the song and to feel the form of the song more. It also helps when you're talking about form to have singing going on in the different um, letter patterns. It just helps the students to hear the change better. When it comes to guided listening and your focus is not on form, in the beginning it really helps if there's not any voices in there because they can focus more on the instruments. Eventually you could add voices in and I do use voices in some of my steady beat songs. But to start out with, especially with the younger grades, instrumentation only will help them to focus on those instruments. Okay, that's all I have for today. I hope you learned some tips and tricks for teaching form and guided listening in class. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a wonderful day.